Hello, and a very warm welcome to the Diversity Project's first solo International Women's Day event. You're going to hear in a few minutes um, some very interesting and inspiring career stories from women who are at different stages in their career in the industry um, and will really enjoy what they do. And we obviously need to attract more women like them. That's one of the Diversity Project's new three-point plan that we're announcing today to try to finally resolve the issue of the scarcity of women who are fund managers in the investment industry. So point one is to attract more women to join us in the first place. And one of our participants in the panel today is from GAIN, Girls Are Investors, um, a fantastic initiative which offers young women internships and then hopefully a permanent role afterwards. We're encouraging all our member firms to get involved. And in the email that will be sent to you after this event, there'll be a link that you can click and sign up or get some more information. The second point of our three-point plan is to focus on male allyship. And in the previous session, which I'm so sure some of you listened into, um, there was advice around how women can be male champions of change. And again, the link will be included. So if you missed it, um, you'll be able to watch that if you're interested. And finally, our third point um, is a new, um, hopefully I can share my screen. It's not going to let me. All right, I'll just have to talk about it. Um, an exciting future female fund managers program, which we are announcing today and which will launch formally in January 2023. Now, this is the first of its kind. Uh, there are lots of initiatives out there to try and encourage women um, in lots of different aspects. But this is really around equipping women with the skills and the confidence that they need to succeed as fund managers. So women who are um, declaring their ambition to be fund managers, who have the aptitude, who are identified either by themselves or their firm as having that aptitude can sign up to the program. They'll need a sponsor at their organization and we'll be covering all sorts of technical and practical and useful aspects of how to succeed, including digital skills, including how to make presentations in a room full of men, how to create visible impact um, and managing through life events like becoming pregnant, announcing that to your boss, asking for a pay rise, managing through the menopause, which will be our third uh, panel this morning. We already have 10 firms signed up, which is phenomenal, um, including Newton. You have Suzanne Hutchins um, on the panel today from Newton, uh, Schroeder's, Fidelity, um, and again, the link showing you who's involved will be uh, shared afterwards. So it's a very exciting development um, and we would love to encourage your firm to get involved. If you're not already involved, uh, just email us at info at diversityproject.com. That's enough from me. Thank you for bearing with me and an advert for the new um, three-point plan and the programme that we're announcing. I'd love to turn now to uh, today's uh, second event, the Inspiring Career Panel, uh, which will be moderated by the wonderful Catherine Graham, who is leading the uh, Diversity Project's partnership work, where we are making sure we don't duplicate any efforts or reinvent any wheels. Um, and Catherine also was chair of the 100 Women in, in Finance chapter in London. Um, let's turn over to you, Catherine, and to introduce your panelists. Thank you, Helen, and hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the panel about inspiring careers in fund management. Um, now, uh, as somebody who's done nearly 30 years myself, I have a few stories, but uh, I'm not the focus of today. We have um, four fantastic women um, who are going to tell you from some very different perspectives. Um, effectively, uh, the positive stories that, uh, that they have, uh, have to tell from their time in fund management, um, what makes their jobs interesting, why, why it's something that you should do, and why also um, it is not something that you should assume that you need a finance degree in order to do and be successful. Um, so without any greater ado, I will go over to our panellists and ask them to just briefly introduce themselves and we'll go straight into questions. Uh, Suzanne, could I uh, ask you to go first? Thank you much and uh, lovely to have everybody on the call today. Um, yes, I'm Suzanne Hutchins. I joined um, the industry in 1991 um, and I head up the Newton Real Return Strategy um, which is an absolute return strategy with about 17 billion US dollars under management. Already I'm having trouble pressing buttons, how traditional. Um, sorry, uh, let's, let's move on and ask Marianne. 
Hi, everyone. Uh, great to be here today. Uh, so I have two roles at Aberdeen. I am a fund manager for our private credit business, which um, has assets under management of over 10 billion. And then I am also the head of ESG for fixed income. So responsible for ensuring the holistic integration of environmental, social and governance factors throughout the fixed income team. Fantastic. Um, Lan, maybe we could ask you to go next. Hi everyone, my name is Lam Wu. I'm one of the fund manager in legal and general investment management uh, in the active fixed income team. Um, I help to manage um, I manage um, European credit corporate bond portfolio. Um, and in 2019, I um, led the launch of um, the Euro credit responsible exclusion funds and also helped to integrate the ESG and responsible investment in um, in portfolio management. Fantastic, thank you. And Olivia, last but not least, um, please introduce yourself. Thank you very much, Catherine. Hi, everyone. My name is Olivia. I'm an analyst at Patrizia. I'm currently working within fund management. Um, I graduated from Edinburgh in 2021. Shortly after finishing my finals, I then began an internship at Patreon Capital through GAIN. And um, that was extended until October until I began at Patrizia. Fantastic. Um, well, let's dive straight in. Um, so let's let's start with those of you who have a, a few years on the clock and been doing this for a little while. I would be love to you to share your stories about um, how you started down this path, because they are all very different. And it's important everyone listening today understands that. Um, Marianne, perhaps we can start with you. Sure. So uh, as you may be able to tell, I'm Australian desperately trying to read to lose the Australian accent but, accent, but I've been told it's not working. Um, so I started in um, banking in Sydney. Um, and I would say when I when I left university, so I did um, a double degree in arts and commerce. And that was a degree I chose because I essentially didn't know what I wanted to do coming out of school, you know, I had no idea. After doing five years at university and taking a year off in, in between, I still had no idea what I wanted to do, um, but I thought the finance industry, you know, I thought that would be an interesting place to start. Um, and so I headed into banking. I did an internship and then I joined the graduate program and I can't recommend that enough to people early on in their careers. A lot of the graduate programs have rotational aspects and it's a really good way to sort of try before you buy and see what excites you and what drives you and, and what works for you. Uh, I moved to London eight years ago, and when I moved to London, I decided to make the switch to asset management. And I did that because um, asset management is very much about long term investing. You know, you're investing people's pension funds um, and you're taking that that longer term view. And that really uh, interested and excited me. So I've, I've moved into that. Uh, and I haven't looked back since, you know, I started as a as an analyst. Um, I. Um, was given the opportunity to manage funds. I now manage two of the private credit funds that we run at Aberdeen. And I just recently was promoted to the head of ESG for fixed income. So, you know, for me, asset management offered a lot of um, career development opportunities. I think yeah, no, I know. Yes, typical. I'm going to leave it off now. Um, as I was saying, Suzanne, your route was was a slightly different one, um, and uh, and probably less traditional. Would you would you like to share, please? Yes, certainly. So um, I um, did a degree at the London University College, um, a fine art degree, um, four year course, and um, during that degree in London, I um, had multiple jobs. Um, in order to finance my degree and um, buy my materials, etc. And uh, some of the jobs that I was doing was working in the city. Um, and I was working at a sports club, meeting lots of wonderful people um, and um, making new friends and contacts. Um, and when I finished my degree, um, I was actually quite tired of the fine arts. Um, didn't really know what direction I wanted to move into and was very much encouraged by the people that I had befriended um, in the city to just um, take the plunge and, um, you know, send out my CV to a number of 
organisations within the asset management industry and places like Reuters, etc. And to be quite honest, I really did not know what I was applying for. Um, and um, it was very, you know, it was foreign territory for me um, in terms of what it was like, to, what it was like um, to work in the city. Anyway, I was very fortunate to have my CV accepted by Newton Investments um, and had um, a number of interviews with um, the founders of the business and was taken on board. Mm -hmm. um, again, I still didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do, um, but I, I really found that over time I had a real passion for investing and the whole aspect of the job, whether it's from looking after people's money, um, the client perspective, um, and also the challenge from day to day. So um, that's how I started in my career. And I've taken lots of examinations and professional um, papers in order to get where I am. And I now head up a team of nine people um, and um, absolutely love my job. So uh, that's, that's where I came from. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Lan, maybe I can just ask you the same question finally. Um, hi, uh, so I, I actually had a bit more of a traditional um, degree. So I did maths uh, in my university and then I did an internship in summer 2008 at an investment bank. And that was originally was my plan to go into a research department in investment banking. Um, but the global financial crisis kind of derailed my plan. <laughs> so one of the things I I feel like it was just um, I I was ready to go in to start work straight away, but because the the hiring freeze after the GFC um, kind of derailed my plan. So I actually did a master in finance. <laughs> um, you don't actually need the finance master, but at the time I thought. Um, it, let's just um, learn a bit more about the industry and also being in London will be able to explore to more uh, have more opportunity to attend career events and meet more people and I think that's one of the the um, one of the reason why I'm attracted to the industry because I actually met some people working on the buy side or asset management at career events um, so to be able to the prospect to be able to like implement ideas and views through investment and uh, investment plan and slightly longer term strategy really appealing to me and comparing to like some of the short term driver on the trading floor it's it's just a career feels like more rewarding in the longer term and that's how I started and um, I started in 2010 so after that it's um, I've actually seen the probably the biggest bull and bear market in the European uh, crisis, as well as the ECB quantitative program. So, and um, yeah, the, and there is a few other crises uh, going on at the moment. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how I started. Thank you. I don't, we don't talk about crises. I, I was in investment banking when, when 98 and the last Russian crisis happened. So yes, we're, we're all having flashbacks, I'm afraid, sadly. Um, Olivia, I'm going to ask you a slightly different question, quite obviously. I mean, you're right at the start of your career. Um, and, and I guess I'm really interested into what made you think about a career in finance? Um, what attracted you? How, how did you make that first move? How did you find out about gain and get involved? Um, and then obviously a little bit on the process from there. So I think what attracted me was having an interest in investing from you know my teenage years at school and then at university I was quite active in a lot of societies and I think if you want to make the most of your career and kind of get on top quite quickly you've got to do something you find interesting otherwise it's it's unenjoyable to say the least. Um, so I was actively involved in various societies but I think what actually deterred me away from the industry was I didn't know how to break into it. I think unless you're in the know about application deadlines, various spring insight programs and just general knowledge about the industries that's already a barrier and then add on top of that being female it's very difficult. Um, so GAIN was unbelievably helpful at every stage so they offered seminars which advanced my understanding on what I what role I wanted to do within the industry um, under the umbrella of investment management. Um, their internship program provided me with an internship at Patreon Capital and the support during that was endless. Um, they also provided me with a mentor who gave me first-hand experience of her own 
pathway and early career, which was invaluable. And she also acted as a sounding board whenever I had any questions, whether they were technical or just personal questions about doing internships. Um, and I think also the thing that was most fundamental um, to help with, within the industry was the workshops to advance your technical skills, which are crucial upon entrance in any internship or entry level role that you have. Okay, thank you. That that's really helpful. So, so why don't we we dive into the to one of the questions that that I hear quite a lot, which is, um, you know, you can't do this kind of thing unless you've uh, studied finance or some financial subject. Um, I think it's it's clear, Suzanne. Maybe we can come to you first because because that was the the story that you brought up. It's clear that it is possible to do that and and more than possible. I mean, how how much experience have you had? Um, going through your career of of, uh, of any issues or struggles or actually any really positive things that have come out of you coming from a completely different uh, background and also uh, other people that you've met along the way I suppose who who have done similar things to you. Yeah that's right so um, I think it's it, it's really important with investment to have a well-rounded view and diversity of input and um, the way in which one can approach an investment um, and that requires you know diversity of gender or um, ethnicity age etc and I think that's all very much um, an important part of your decision making process um, I mean I I never had a problem as a woman in the industry in fact and, and maybe I was just one of the very lucky ones um, but um, Newton, um, you know, had two um, female uh, CEOs um, who were great leaders of the organisation, one of whom is Helena Morrissey. Um, so um, showed great leadership in the fact that you can be a female in the industry and be very successful. And then subsequently, after many changes at Newton, we had Hanukkah Smith. And again, you know, that is very, very inspiring for all women in the industry. Um, to have that trailblaze of uh, female leadership. And I would honestly say that um, I feel, and again, maybe it's just luck, but I do feel as though it's quite a level playing field. Um, I think that you have to work as hard as everybody else. Um, and I think that women can bring um, a level of EQ as well as IQ, which is invaluable in terms of making your investment decisions. And obviously, there's a massive push um, from um, shareholders, clients, etc., to see diversity across um, all organisations. So, um, you know, having a fine art degree, I think, is was very relevant. Um, you know, you didn't have to come through um, the traditional routes. One thing I was going to actually add, Catherine, is that, um, you know, speaking to other people and my current CIO, actually, um, a number of women um, and younger people may have gaps in their um, CVs or may not come through the traditional route. And quite often recruiters can overlook those individuals. Um, so it's so important to be able to network and use LinkedIn and all the various ways that Olivia has described in order to really reach out and, and really get involved in the industry. Yeah. And uh, and Olivia, maybe maybe we could come to you with that with that same question again. You, you haven't taken the most traditional route um, in terms of your uh, your degree. But um, how, how have you found uh having that that background helpful in the role that, as you've done it so far and also who, who are you surrounded by who are who are your compatriots and and where have they come from so just as context i studied geography at university and i did so because i'm a generalist i also didn't really know what avenue i wanted to take um, and i was surrounded by a lot of peers who wanted to go into the same industry who did do finance related degrees but it's interesting that as we've come out the other end of university a lot of the people actually getting roles within the industry are not purely from a finance background and that's fantastic to see and i think the reason for that is because well the thing that i've learned is that there's various different roles within the industry that you can take so if you're if you're more mathematical you might enjoy a quantitative um, analyst role if you're more client-facing it could be investor relations if you like 
innovation and thinking of new products, then it would be a products avenue. So I think that's the thing is you don't necessarily have to have one degree because it's not a one size fits all. Um, mm -hmm. And I also think the thing that I've noticed is that it's now becoming celebrated, um, having different perspectives and you can bring a really, really different based on your degree and what you've learned over the course of your degree or whether you haven't done a degree as well. Um, you can bring a different perspective and that's really, really being celebrated within the industry. And yeah, diversity of thought is something which the value is now being realized, which is fantastic. Well, I, I would say, especially at the moment with the markets being so incredibly difficult, the more different perspectives you can have, the better. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, so the, then maybe we could look at, at the other things that are helpful once once you're there, once you've decided this is what you want to do and you've used something like GAIN in order to, to land that position. Um, the next thing you need to do is to be able to, to succeed and to move up in the organisation and to be um, happy and confident in your job. So maybe we could talk um, to, to Marianne first about her experience of that. Um, and the, particularly, I think, you know, the going back to the previous panel about male allyship, maybe some sponsors or some other people who have helped you along the way. Sure, and it's definitely very important to have male sponsors because if you're relying solely on females, you, you won't get very far, unfortunately. Um, so I think uh, what's really helped me in, in my career has been not so much formal mentorship um, or coaching or, or sponsorship programs, but that informal um, establishment of those relationships. And if I think about how I've done that, um, a lot of that is is internally networking and externally networking, but it's also making sure that you deliver in your job and you and you you know you commit to the brand that you want people to see and and you I guess grow grow that brand. So you know when you're reaching out to people and asking them, oh you know I've got a few questions on this and trying to establish those informal networking or sponsorship um, relationships that person thinks positively of you. So they think, oh, that's Marianne, you know, she did a really good job at this, or, oh, you know, I saw her speaking at a panel the other day, or I saw her do this. And, and then that, you know, the ability to open and start that relationship is, is a lot easier. You know, you're bringing something to them, you know, you're offering, you're saying, you know, either you've got something to talk to them about that affects their business, or they recognize you and the work that you're doing. Um, and I think that's a really, really good way to sort of get ahead and, and step up. I, to be completely honest, the, the more formal side of things haven't worked for me. You know, I've done that a few times. And I, to me, what's really important is having that spark with the person. And in a more formal setting, you can't always, uh, always guarantee that. But I know that that does work for some people, um, that, that form as well. Um, so I would say that's probably the main way and the main um, contributor to my success over my career during both banking and asset management. Okay. It's really establishing that that presence and, and making sure people know, you know, the, the good work that you do. Fantastic. Um, Lan, maybe I could ask you the same question because you had some some very interesting thoughts and experience on that. <laughs> yes, I'm happy to share. Um, and similar to Marianne, I actually, yeah, I have also both benefits. I feel like I have both benefit from both internal and external mentorship and coaching, actually, as well. Um, so in terms of internal, I think um, throughout my career, I've been, I've, I've been in the same firm for 12 years, so I've been here quite a long time. But during this 12 years, I actually have like four different bosses <laughs> and um, you will probably not be surprised to hear they were all men. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, in terms of how they helped me to progress a different stage of my career, I think that's very important. And, and I still maintain very good relationship with each of them. Mm. Uh, and they, they really gave me some of the um, advice and um, share their experience, but also really help me to uh, express my own view and um, sort of like grow as a portfolio manager rather than just trying to be one of them. <laughs> I think that's that's quite key. Um, and then the other thing I might want to touch a little bit on is the coaching aspects, which mm. are more external. And I actually have, uh, I was in one of the uh, the Diversity Project 30% Club uh, cross 
cross company coaching uh, program, and that was from an external. Uh, coach and as well as more recently I because I had a baby in 2020 so I also had a coach for being a new parent how to transit transition uh, going to maternity leave and also returning to work and I found those two are uh, both very uh, beneficial in terms of they can be a sounding board to help me to sort of prioritize what I about where 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 am I uh, how focus where I can have the most impact because now as a as a mom with young as a as a new parent with young children my time is quite limited so um in order to not we, we often sometimes get a bit overwhelmed into the daily to-do list and my daily to-do list feels like it's never ending but uh, having the coaching it's helped you to how to approach some of the more strategic thinking um also how to approach certain tricky situations um i think that that's my personal experience which i i think it really benefits uh for my career and progressing Oh, thank you. No, that's uh, that's incredibly helpful. Um, maybe you, you were talking about the to do list. Maybe maybe the thing that we should we should have a look at now is uh, is what does the typical day look like? Um, I mean, certainly from my experience, there is no such thing as a traditional day. Um, but uh, but maybe maybe Suzanne, I could ask you first to uh, to jump in and, and explain um, what does the day job look like? Yeah, sure. Well, you're absolutely right. There is no typical day. And, you know, that's the thrill of it in many ways because you're constantly being stretched and challenged and being faced with new opportunities and uh, decisions to make. I mean, just take, you know, the current crisis that we're in, um, you know, the markets are up and down, clients are asking lots of questions, they're worried about where their money is going to go, you've got to make investment decisions, you've got to have balance, you've got to be thoughtful, you've got to be long term. And one of the ways in order to cope with your day to day is really to strike that balance. You've got to be really healthy in mind and body, as well as um, obviously being able to do your job. So having a very balanced life, I think, is absolutely key because otherwise you will get thrown off the rails at some point. And also, um, you know, a lot of the, the speakers today have talked about mentoring and, um, you know, the team based approach. And I think having um, people around you that you enjoy working with, that you've created a lot of trust, um, that understand you, you understand them, is really powerful in what is very challenging on a day to day basis. So let's get down to the day to day. Well, th there's no one day that's the same. Um, I get up very early. Um, I look after my animals and I've got horses and dogs and get them fresh air and go for a good long run. Um, and then my day starts and it will start with, um, you know, going on to my emails, um, you know, looking to see what markets have done over the night and in the morning. Um, and then there is a regular morning meeting at uh, quarter to nine with all of the investment group at Newton, which at the moment we are working in a hybrid role where we're virtually dialing in. Um, but some of us are going back to the office two or three times a week. And that will be around a 20 minute call. We'll be talking about specific topics, whether um, it's the oil price, um, whether it's a company that's had results like Eshted or whether it's portfolio activity, what we did over the last week or so, buying bonds, buying gold, um, whatever that is. So it can be quite short and sharp. It's shared um, challenge and debate. And then I get on to my um, next meeting, which will be my team meeting. Um, so that usually takes about an hour um, every day. Um, it's different when we're in the office because we're physically present, but as we're all working from home it's really important to have that contact continually so we'll talk, be talking about specific companies specific stocks talking about portfolio construction maybe talking about um, client interaction um, investment packs having analysts in to talk about um, their um, investment views um, and you know really really sort of trying to get to the core of the investment argument and where we should be positioned, particularly in the, the strategy that I run is absolute return. So basically it's a benchmark where 
you have to make money and not lose it over the longer term, which is very challenging when markets are down 20% over a year to date basis. Um, and then for the rest of the day, it can be quite varied. I will quite often have client meetings. I'll have uh, company um, calls um, with investments that we've got in the portfolio. Um, I'll have regular catch ups with individuals on my team, my boss. Um, I'm on various committees within the organisation, so, you know, maybe on the risk management committee, um, diversity and inclusion project committee, there's, there's lots of things that are going on within the organisation that you have to um, get involved with. Um, and, um, you know, my KPIs, my key performance indicators are based upon um, the results that the strategy delivers and whether it meets the client's objective over the longer term. But it's also, there's quite a lot of soft issues around how I'm managing my team, how we're improving the organisation, what are we doing in terms of um, progression with the business, um, environmental, social and governance issues are all high on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so there's lots always to be learning. And that's one aspect as well about the job is that you have to constantly learn and keep making sure that your credentials are are really good um yeah. and that um i mean i also did a, a course today i i want to print from home and there's loads of regulations around printing from home so i had to then do a course to make sure that i was up to speed with all the regulations so um you know that a, a typical day um i have a to-do list um, like um, Lan Wu, which um, never goes away. Um, it, it, but, you know, that's, that's part of the course. And I think the yeah. most important thing about all of this is to have passion for it and really enjoy it. Yeah. That, that, well, clear, clearly that comes through. <laughs> you have that. Um, Lan, maybe I could ask you, um, it, it, you know, what, what is familiar in that list and, and that day and, and what's different? What, what things would you, you pull out as being part of a typical day yeah I was gonna say I think it sounded um similar it, it's an early start I would say I usually get up around six or six thirty these days and competing with my one year old about my phone <laughs> she wants to take the phone to watch a YouTube video I want to look, look in and check my Brimba news and and look at FT so um, that was a bit of a struggle for the start. And up from there, <laughs> it's very similar. We will have uh, morning calls, um, team discussions, and uh, yeah, constantly interaction with um, both virtual and in the office. I'm actually in the office today, but we are moving to this hybrid model, which uh, it's, it's a key challenge to be able to get everyone's view in different sort of formats. Um, I think yeah, I, maybe the typical day, I would just say it's also prioritizing. So what's our time sensitive decision that has to make um, and uh, uh, put on trades and uh, in, uh, liaise with traders, analysts, discussing positions and the constant monitoring of like your portfolio. That is my main job uh, of the day. And then in the sort of afternoon, it tends to be a bit quieter. Uh, we'll do some like sort of independent research or reading, um, have more meetings and yeah, it could range from interaction with clients or internal uh, distribution teams. And last week I was in um, uh, graduate uh, uh, recruitment for our firm, for so looking for the next generation talent. So there's different roles as well, what, what we could do. Uh, sorry, different, different, there's no typical day, there's lots of... Um, other projects that we we get involved um and and just meeting with different people and um uh yeah as, uh, as Suzanne said like it's, it's kind of like constant adapting and challenging investment process and your the uh, investment thesis um to to try to focus to deliver the result for our clients yeah. um one thing I'll mention yeah like it doesn't I, my day tend to finish around six as well, 6, 6.30. And one thing, the difference between going as a portfolio manager is that you go home, but you do have the position. <laughs> so it doesn't just stop there. So uh, we do tend to like reading, but there is, uh, once markets close, it's, it's yeah, there isn't uh, sort of like less things you would be able to do. And you, you might start the day fresh with new challenge. But yeah, looking ahead is, um, yeah, every day is different in some way. <laughs> 
<laughs> thank you, thank you. That's really helpful. Um, we've got quite a few questions coming in, so I do want to make a little bit of time at the end for, for questions from from people who are listening in. But but very quickly, um, Marianne and Olivia, I'd love to ask you both. Um, what's the best thing about your job, uh, Marianne? Maybe we could start with you. Uh, so I'll try and be very quick for the for the Q and A. Um, as head of ESG um, at Aberdeen, you know we have some fantastic um, products that we've developed to help us on the journey to to net zero. And you know when I first started out in the industry, I started off in financing infrastructure, and I love to you know drive past a wind farm and think I contributed to that. So there's a real tangible you know real world impact that that I'm I feel like I'm making. So. I guess that's my one key thing for me. Thank you. And Olivia? Um, I've got two things. The first um, is the people I work with. I think early career, it's really important to have a mentor if you can, or just role models, um, male or female, just people to support you in the way. And I have that a lot um, in my workplace, which is fantastic. And the second is probably the variety of projects and exposure. Um, I think experience within the industry um, is as important as technical knowledge that you might acquire from your degree degree and to take this to a more relatable um, aspect for people who are um, university students currently um, who are attending this webinar if you can try and gain as much experience as you can whether it's a webinar like this and people's opinions um, so secondhand or firsthand through internships that are offered by gain and similar programs in the diversity project and all of those take advantage of them I would say that having come from a non-finance background experience is probably as important as technical knowledge so that's that's what I would say fantastic thank you well well I might just segue into that slightly because one of the questions that that just came up was was interesting saying um what's the best piece of advice that you've ever been given as a woman in the industry um uh, Olivia possibly that was uh, that was yours but would anybody like to uh, to volunteer um the best piece of advice and help our panel uh, so I would say the worst piece of advice I've ever been given, and I did hear this a lot when I was starting out, is that, you know, you need to be like a man to get ahead. You know, you need to dress like a man, you need to act like a man, you need to keep those feelings that women have at home. And I think that is categorically not the way that I behave or the way that I would encourage anyone to behave, you know. As women, we bring something very, very different to the workplace. And, uh, you know, I think someone earlier touched on the EQ side of things. You know, that is so important in terms of managing teams, in terms of making investment decisions. Um, so I would encourage everyone to be, you know, unreservedly themselves. Okay. Any, uh, any more nuggets of advice? Suzanne? Uh, I'd, I'd add a couple of things. Um, one is investment is a marathon and not a sprint. Um, so, you know, don't burn yourself out. Take the long term view and your clients are in it for the long term. And you should think about that in terms of looking after yourself um, and your career. And secondly, um, have confidence in yourself. I think that a lot of females lack confidence, perhaps because they don't come from or they don't think they come from the right backgrounds or that they are a woman and I'll tell you something you know you should go in there with confidence because you've got the right to be there as much as anybody else. Mm. No, well, I, I was going to say I, I, I uh, certainly echo that the, the one best piece of advice I was given in my first few years on the job was just go and ask because what's the worst that can happen um, and uh, whether that's asking for a pay rise or promotion or a different job or something else uh, it, it absolutely doesn't hurt to ask the question and you can bet that there's a man who's already gone and done that before you <laughs> um okay so let's let's move on to uh, to one of the other questions um uh people looking for mentors um if there's no mentorship programs then um you know how how do you go about this i mean obviously there are various different organizations with mentorship programs available um have have any of you any experience of of somebody coming to search you out or, or trying to search somebody out for yourself um i could speak from the point of view of seeking mentors within um, my company normally it actually comes indirectly so you'll get chatting to someone by the coffee machine and you'll just 
get on with them very well. And then I think my biggest piece of advice would be just be bold, ask to go for a coffee or a virtual coffee as we now work in a hybrid world with various people within um, your department, cross departments at every level, whether they're a few years older than you or more senior i think that there's no harm in asking as you said don't be afraid to go ask questions no question is a stupid question um i think exactly the same with seeking out mentors even if there's an no official program i think just having a role model that you can talk to um, and hear their experience and their advice is most crucial so just don't be afraid to talk to everyone within your company okay any other suggestions well, I think a mentor could be outside of your company as well. So, um, you know, think about broadening your horizons um, with all the people that you might know, whether it's people living in your street that perhaps, um, you know, have got good um, experience. Um, so, you know, there's lots of ways in which you can do it. And I'm sure that probably, and I'm, I'm, I'll throw this back to you, Catherine, but I'm sure that there's some sort of mentorship that can go on within the diversity projects which could be helpful for individuals that absolutely yes that there are uh, mentorship programs in in um a, a lot of or similar organizations in fact one of the things i'm doing pulling together our partnerships is to find out exactly the span of those and how those would work for everyone who's involved so if you can't find one another way and uh, my advice would be come to a place like the diversity project or one of the other women's organizations and just ask um, because these things are there and the help is there. Um, so um, last of the questions, I think that might be all we have time for, but uh, could could you just maybe uh, mention how you personally have empowered and, and helped other female employees to get on in their jobs um, and maybe identify women who maybe should deserve a promotion or, or something else, but aren't necessarily being heard? Um, does anybody have any experience or comments on on that situation? Um, I can probably uh, help to answer that question because um, I've been quite heavily involved in the interview and recruitment process now for uh, uh, for investment team. And uh, I think one thing it's, it's important to uh, have someone to speak up for you in what it matters. <laughs> I might not be the hiring manager. But I think in terms of the interview panels, um, yeah, like uh, sometimes the diversity thought is is how we actually spot the next talent. And that's one way I feel like uh, how we we sort of trying to help the next generation, especially female, to get into the industry. Um, the other thing I want to mention is, yeah, like um, the mentorship is is important, definitely, um, as, as several panels panelists that was already, already mentioned and after that um, once it's recruited uh, recruit recruited and one of them the the person I vouched for actually asked me to be her mentor I felt that was really um, really empowering and and it's it's actually it's a two-way experience and I feel like I'm also learning stuff from mentoring her as well as um uh, sort of like being mentor at her stage <laughs> and I, I and I literally basically uh, at one of the feedback I did say to them that I saw a lot of myself in her <laughs> and that was one way I felt like it would be most powerful to convince the other people that to go for the decision um yeah wonderful thank you and look thank you everyone so much for your time today it has been fantastic and, and I hope really helpful for everyone who's listening in I've certainly enjoyed finding out a little bit more about all of you and uh, and it just leaves me to say um, please do uh, have a look at the information that's uh, that we're sending you on gain and if there is any way for you to get involved either individually as someone who's looking for to start their career or to change their career or indeed somebody who uh, her, is part of an organization that can help be involved in sponsoring gain then then please do do that and also our female fund manager program please keep an eye out for that and please get your organizations involved because uh, the more we can all do collectively to help people on their career the better they will be um, and uh, so thank you for your time today and uh, we will see you in the next panel in just a moment <laughs>